Hey robot makers, do you want to know how to take a model that you've created in Fusion 360 and then render that in Blender to make it look really nice? Then keep watching. So let's have a look how we can actually do this. So Fusion, you can create a model and you can export that model as an OBJ file or object file and then bring that into Blender and then render it out using the full power of Blender. And remember, Blender is completely free. So in Fusion 360, you can create animations, rendered outputs using the cloud rendering option. But this can be really expensive. You have to have the full blown license and you get 100 credits to begin with. And if you want to do a motion study and then render that out as an animation, then it can get very expensive. Rendering animations is not possible on the education and hobbyist license because you need that cloud rendering option. So this, this solution is really, really neat because it's completely free and it's powered by Blender 3. So the process is surprisingly simple. We're going to export from Fusion as an OBJ file, an object file, and I think it's called an alias wavefront file format, and we're going to import that into Blender. So in Blender, Blender, if you go to Blender.org, you can download Blender completely for free. It works on Macs, Linux, and Windows. And once you've got Blender installed, you can just simply go to File, Import, and Wavefront.obj file, which is an alias Wavefront file. Once you've imported that into Blender, you may need to scale the object. And we'll have a look at how to do all these different steps in a second, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of the process first. So you can scale it using S to scale. And when you're happy, you can just hit Return, and then it'll be the correct size. Now, one of the things that's a bit of a limitation of this OBJ file format is the textures. So once you brought those textures that you've assigned using the appearance panel in Fusion, once you brought them via the object file into Blender, you will see them listed there. So on the side there under the scene collections, under the model that I've called Gripper version 11, you can see we've got plastic matte white, plastic matte yellow, plastic matte red, black, steel satin and nylon white. All those different colors have currently got kind of a uh, gray color. So we need to go and edit those and bring them back to life to be the correct color. So to edit a texture, you simply click on the scenes collection, open up the objects until you can see the collection of red beach ball icons, and then you'll see each of the fusion materials that you've assigned to that list. Um, however, it might not quite look the same as what I've got there. So changing the colors, really, really straightforward. So change the base color, which is just a solid color. You just click on that base color, and it'll pop open the uh, the color picker and you can select the correct color then. You can also, if you know how to use Blender, change some of the other different surface types. So this principal BSDF is a type of surface that's got some scattering, some diffusion, some glossiness and so on. And you can tweak all those settings down further down in the panel if you know what you're doing. And you can always play about. If you do it wrong, you can just reload the file. So navigating uh, around the environment is pretty simple. It's very similar to Fusion. If you know how to use that, it's a 3D workspace. Space. So you've got an X, Y, and Z. And at the very top right, you've got that very similar to Fusion's orientation cube. You've got these uh, X, Y, and Z buttons, and you can drag them around and it'll move the whole environment. And if you've got a mouse, you can sort of scroll in and out. If you've got a mouse. If you've got a mouse, you can scroll in and out of the environment, zooming in and out. There's also these four buttons at the top of the viewport window. And what these are is a wireframe, solid, material or rendered and it's a bit like in Fusion 360 where you can choose between the different view options but they don't have rendered as an option in Fusion 360 to work in a in a workspace while you're creating everything you can in Blender. To begin with we tend to set that in the solid and it looks quite flat there's no shading or anything it's just uh, got some colors assigned to it. So one of the things we can do in Blender is create a constraint which we can lock um, the camera to a point on the the object and we can rotate around that point uh, and it will always be the camera will always be pointing on that object so to do the track to camera we create something called an empty so to create an empty we do shift and a that brings out a little menu you can see on the top right there we can then select the type of empty that we want we can have a plane axis arrows we're going to use a cube because it makes it easier to uh, envisage what's encapsulated within that empty and it just means that it's something that's in the scene that won't get rendered out but is there for us to uh, point other objects to so this will allow us to lock the camera to our object no matter where we place the camera in the scene it will always be pointing at this uh, this empty so we move the empty by selecting it in the scene collections area then pressing g to grab it once you've grabbed it you might not be able to see it because it might be too small and it might be within the model so you can press s to scale it so it, it scales out a bit like the picture we've got on the screen there so you'll see the, uh, the orange lines around the the empty 
So once we've done that, we then need to add an object constraint. So if we go to the camera in the scenes collection, we click on the constraints tab. It looks like a little avocado in blue there. We click on the object constraint, select track two, and we change the target to the empty that we've just created. We change the axis track, the track axis to minus Z, and we change the up to Y. And that will be all the correct settings for it to, to track everything. Now to animate it, uh, we can now start positioning that where we want the camera to be. So if you've not used Blender before, if you press O on the keyboard, that will be the um, the camera view. You can move out of that, you can press some of the other keys, all the numeric keys have got different positions. So seven is like a top down view, one is a side view and so on. Um, so you can press those and have a play around with it. Zero is the camera's view. So we're going to create a keyframe. At the very bottom of the screen we'll see that there is a playhead uh, timeline and we can create a keyframe by just locking down some of the uh, the settings where the camera and the object currently are. We're then going to move the camera to a different position, capture some more keyframes, move the camera again, capture some more keyframes and Blender will work out how to move the camera around those different positions. So we don't need to do anything else, just assign these keyframes. Fusion is really quite Fusion. Blender will figure out the rest. So to move the camera, um, we just keep, click on the camera from the scene collection, we press G to grab the camera we can now position it anywhere we want and it will stay tracked to our object the camera looks like a little pyramid inverted so if you press o on the viewport that will toggle the camera view if you press it again it comes out of that view now to make our view look really really fancy our render we can use something called depth of field and that's like when you get a regular camera and you bring something really close and all the background blows out in fact if you look behind me this is depth of field as i move further away you can see things become sharper as i come closer to the camera they become more blurred uh, and that blurred effect is called a boku and that's what we're seeking to do um, within blender so there's a depth of field button if we click on the camera icon from the uh, scene collection we click on the little green camera icon there click on the depth of field checkbox and then we can set the f-stop to 0.1 0.1 is a really really extreme f-stop um, so you'll get loads of depth of field with that you'll be able to play around with it but you might want to something a bit more natural maybe 0.3 that will make it look a bit more like a regular camera like this one I'm using now. So we do need to change the render engine. I think when you open up Blender, it now defaults to Eevee and we want to use Cycles. Cycles looks very similar if you've ever rendered anything in Fusion 360 in the rendering engine where it looks grainy and it kind of gradually gets sharper and more refined. That's how Cycles works as well. So we want to change it to Cycles and we want to change the render max samples to 500 and select Denoise as well. Denoise will just make it a bit smoother if there's any still residual um, grainy bits left. And then you probably want to do a test render because if you're going to render out an animation, it could take several hours depending if it's like a 4K image uh, with 500 samples. Samples is the number of times that the uh, the cycles will go around and refine that image a bit further. So if you've got 500 samples per image, you've got 125 images, 60 frames a second at 4K, it could take some time to do that. But the results will be absolutely perfect. So to render out a test image you simply press F12 or you can just go to the render menu and click render image and you'll see the image that gets returned and it will save it to the current location and we can change um, that save location and I'll show you how to do that uh, in a second. So let's go over to first of all to Fusion and see how we can export a file. So I'm just going to load up Fusion 360. So I'm in Fusion 360 here and I've got a little model here if I just uh, move this you can see this is a fully working model of a gripper that I've created. So I'm just going to reset the position there. Now, if I want to export this, I simply go up to the file menu over here and then I do export. And then where it says export type, we go down to the OBJ file format and then we just save that out. It's going to save it to my downloads folder. So that's how we do it in Fusion 360. Very, very simple. Now, if we go over to Blender, Here's one I prepared earlier. So if I go over to Blender, I'm just going to create a new file just so that we can start from scratch. So whenever you start Blender, you always get the default cube in your scene. We can we can get rid of that just by pressing on it and then pressing X to delete. That gets rid of it. Now, if we go to file and import, one of the import options there is wavefront.obj. Now, if we go to that downloads folder where we, we uh, downloaded the file to, we can see we've got this gripper 11.obj. Let's import that. Okay, I'm going to zoom out now, and this thing is absolutely gigantic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object just by pressing up here in the scene selection. I'm going to move up my mouse over here. I'm going to press S to scale, and you'll see this little up and down. And as you move your mouse left and right, up or down, you'll see it scale. So I'm going to move it right down 
and then I'm going to zoom in just by pinch to zoom on my Mac. I think on a, on a regular mouse you can use the middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out and you can also use this little um, orientation thing here. Now I do want to rotate this round currently it's, it's stood like this so I'm going to press R for rotate and I'm just going to move that down till it's about um, um, to about there and we can actually go over if I just get out the way a second you can see all the rotational things here as well so we can change that to zero change that to zero and change that to two zero so what I can do now I can just press G to grab and I can move that back so it's roughly in the middle now if I want to make sure that it's it's uh, true if I press one that will do a side on view so I can press G again and just make sure it's above that red origin line there if I press three it'll rotate round that's pretty good let's make it maybe there and then if I look at seven I can see the top down view I can also see my little camera just there so if I select my camera press zero I'm currently like really cropped in so I need to move that camera out a bit now what I can do I can actually split my monitor into two different views and I can have one as the sort of top view and then I can have one over here as the camera view so we can just zoom into that camera view there a bit better Let's do it like so and then I'm going to grab the camera, I'm going to press G and I'm going to pull it back like so. I'm going to change the uh, the view again just by pressing 3. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Now you can see at the moment the camera isn't actually looking at the object properly. We need to do that thing where we create the, the empty. So if I do Shift and A, I'm going to create an empty. I'm going to select cube. I'm going to grow that cube just by pressing S to scale it a little bit. That'll do and then I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to put the origin maybe somewhere like that. So it's the middle there that we're actually focusing on. OK, now what we need to do is go back over to the camera. We want to select that little that little avocado like looking thing there. We click add object constraint and we want the track to and we want to track. The target is our empty because it's minus Z and Y. I think that's correct. I grab my camera. You can see now it's always going to be looking at that object no matter where I place the camera in the scene because it's focused and it's locked to that empty. What we want to do next then is have a look at some of the colours. Um, so currently if we change this to, I'm going to scroll that and go to rendered, all the uh, the textures are currently just like a white colour and the, the lamp that we've got there isn't a great lamp either. We can change that lighting too. But let's just go over to our, our gripper and we can see all these different materials that we've got here. So these different materials we've got, we've got white, yellow, let's change the yellow colour. So if I go over here, click on that little beach ball down here, just there. So I'm going to look at the uh, the different colours. I'm going to click the base colour, make, make that a yellow. You can see immediately now on the right hand side our, our rendered image is looking yellow. And let's also change the red, make that so that's a nice red colour. Make our black a nice dark colour. And what else do we have? Steel. So we can change that to be, instead of it being a principal BSDF, we're going to change that to be Anseotropic BSDF. That'll make it nice and shiny. Now we're currently still using the Eevee renderer so let's go back up to our camera and where we've got render engine we're going to change that to be cycles. You can now see that it's doing that granular thing and that lamp I'm not very happy with the uh, light source that we've got there so if I click on that I go over to our lamp you can change the different types I'm going to change it to a sun I'm going to dial that back a bit because that's a bit insane at the moment so and uh, we can change the angle of the sun so if we just click into the sun there and press R to rotate we can see there that it's going to change the angle of the sun and we can also change like the the height how far away the sun is I rotate that around again like so that creates some interesting things it's still a bit strong I might dial that back to maybe five it's going to keep playing about with this until I'm happy with it try one one looks a little bit dark two looks okay I'm probably going to stick with that for now that looks good and let's just do a test render. I'm going to go up to render, render image. And I'm just going to see how that actually looks. Now currently it's only running, um, you can see there are a couple of renders. It's going to render 4,996 uh, times. And what we'll see is these areas here that are dark that look quite grainy, they'll get more and more refined and less sort of dirty looking. They'll look more smooth. Now this model hasn't got any bevels on the edges. They can create really nice specular highlights when you're rendering. So that's one of the tips I would give if you're creating a, an image like this, a model, you want to make sure the edges um, have a bit of curvature to them that they're not completely flat on. Okay, so the other thing we wanted to do is create a bit of depth of field. So if I select the camera, up here and I'm going to go down to depth of field I'm going to click on that and what also we want to do is change the f-stop to be 
0.1 I think it was which looks really extreme there let's bring the camera a bit closer in uh, maybe it won't quite look as as bad as it did then that looks still you can see there that looks nice and sharp but everything else looks very very blurred so let's rotate let's rotate rotate our camera up a little bit so if that's too blurred we can change that depth of field uh, and make it maybe not quite as extreme as that let's try 0 0.3 let's try 0.5 yeah that's looking a bit better for this particular use and if i grab the camera i can sort of spin it round and get some interesting angles from that right so we're now ready to, to start working on our animation so the very bottom of the screen here is a, is a timeline so if we start here we can go over to the the camera to this orange thing and we can click these little buttons next to it and what they're going to do is they're going to create keyframes I'm going to create location and rotation I'm not going to change the scale so it's just those I'm then going to move my playhead okay so I need to make sure I've got camera selected up here in the top right and what I'm going to do now is I can move the playhead along. Now, if I go to the zero position on here and I make sure I've got the location and the rotation all clicked, that will create keyframes. We can see there we've got these orange blobs. If I move this on to, say, 30 and I move my camera, so I'm just going to look into my scene there. I'm going to grab my camera and move that around. Let's get a top view of this. Let's go right around here for example i'm then going to click on the keyframes again and then i'm going to move it to frame 60 and i'm going to grab the camera and move it around the other side and again just do the keyframes like so now if i grab that playhead you'll now see that it spins around in our little camera view around there this is what the camera will actually see as we play so if i press play that's the animation that we'll actually get i don't want it to go to waste lots of rendering cycles going past um, frame 70 so what we can do in our output is change the number the end frame so I'm going to change that to 70 so it will now only render from 0 to 70 um, the last thing we want to look at is output so if I just move out the way there you can see this output folder this is where it will output all the images so I'm just going to click on my desktop I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call that one output so let's just accept that now let's uh, give this a render so I'm not going to press render now because it will mess up my screen recording um, there's only so much power in this macbook uh, m1 that i've got uh, and I've, if i render this out it will use every single piece of cpu and destroy this recording <laughs> so we don't want to do that but that's how we do it next we would just click on the render animation and it will render each frame one at a time and you'll get an image sequence here's one i prepared earlier let me go to quicktime if you're on an apple mac uh, in fact if you're on windows quicktime has a really great feature which is that you can open an image sequence so if i go to open an image sequence and i've got my test render here i choose that um, i'm going to say it's uh, 24 frames a second and whatever actual size it's then going to prepare the video uh, it's going to stick all those frames together in an actual movie so if we now click play on here this is a slightly more nicely rendered one i've only done a couple of frames we can see there it's spinning around and this has got depth of field it's got motion blur probably needs a bit more work the background looks a bit flat and a bit boring maybe we should have a, a white backdrop on it but you get the idea that it looks really nice so if you like these videos i go live every single sunday at seven o'clock greenwich mean time we're about to change time zones in the uk to british summer time um, which means it'll be slightly out by an hour but if you go from greenwich mean time we'll be good for that um so yeah you know what time zone you live in you know roughly where you'll be in the world when i'll be going live on a sunday and i do that every single sunday without fail if you want to help out the show you can also go over to buymeacoffee.com slash kevmaclear and help pay for some of the, uh, the expenses about running a show like this pay for website hosting the royalty fee music the graphic software the streaming software and all the equipment too and if you've not already checked out smarsfan.com i've got a whole bunch of tutorials about how to build robots smarts robots um, all the code that you'd need loads of tutorials and videos and links and so on so check out smarsfan.com as well and if you want to follow me on social media, I'm on all the social medias. So Facebook slash group slash small robots. If you want to join the small robots group uh, and I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and you can also look at the, uh, the website too. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.